Today, we have an epic battle for you. Microsoft's new Surface Laptop 7s versus Apple's MacBook Airs. Representing Team Microsoft, we have the Surface Laptop 13-inch with the X Plus chip and one with the X Elite chip. And we also have the 15-inch with the X Elite chip too. Representing Team Apple, we have the 13-inch and 15-inch Air with M3. We're going to score each part of the laptop separately, and then at the end, we'll add up the scores and declare an ultimate winner. Let's start with their build quality and portability. Both the MacBook Airs and the Surface laptops feel very premium. The Surface's chassis is slightly more rigid than the Airs, but when you look closely, the Surface isn't quite as well built. Our Surface Laptop 7 13 with the X Elite processor does not sit flush on the desk. If you tap on the bottom right corner, you can clearly hear that there is a gap. This didn't happen, by the way, on our other two models. Despite this, the Surface Laptop, it looks more stylish, especially in the blue colour. That colour, it just looks so refreshing. The MacBook Air's darker colour does have an improved coating with the M3 version, so they no longer pick up fingerprints quite as horribly as before. We don't have the darker coloured Surface, but I can tell you this about the blue one. It does not pick up fingerprints at all. Finally, all their screens can be opened with one hand. When it comes to portability, the MacBook Airs have a slight lead. They're about a banana lighter. Overall, in this category, the Surface wins in looks and the Air wins in portability. So we're going to give both of these laptops a score of 9 out of 10. Let's talk about their displays. The Air comes with either a 13.6 or 15.3 inch panel. Both have high resolutions hitting 224 pixels per inch. We measured over 500 nits of brightness, making the Airs suitable for brighter environments, like using them next to a window. They also cover the full P3 colour gamut. Their main downsides though are that they only refresh at 60Hz, they aren't touchscreens, and they don't deliver the increased contrast that an OLED display would. The Surface's laptop's displays measure 13.8 or 15 inches. They have a slightly lower pixel density of 200 pixels per inch. When it comes to brightness, we measured around 600 nits. The Surface also gives you a fast refresh rate at 120 hertz. This will make content moving on screen look smooth. They also support a variable refresh rate down to 24 hertz, which will help with battery life. Plus, the Surfaces have touchscreens. The only thing that is really missing is that they aren't using OLED panels. With that said, we're awarding a 9 to the Surface laptops and a 7 to the Airs. When it comes to the keyboards, all these laptops have good high quality ones that are backlit. The MacBook Airs isn't the most comfortable to type on though, as it feels a bit low travel. The Surface's keyboard does feel more satisfying, but it's still not in the upper echelons of comfortable keyboards. When it comes to layout, the Airs have a standard layout, which means that you won't mispress keys. The Surfaces is almost standard. Microsoft has introduced a Copilot key to replace the right control key. With that said, the Surface laptops get a score of 7 out of 10 and the Airs get a score of 6. The trackpads are both fantastic. MacBooks have always had the best trackpads in the industry. The Surface Laptop 7 though is the first Windows laptop that I feel can compete. It uses an excellent haptic trackpad that does not have the palm rejection issues of the other haptic ones that we've tried in Windows laptops. Both the Surface and Airs are therefore getting full marks of 10 out of 10. Alright, let's now talk performance. The Surface Laptop 13 can be configured with either an X Plus or X Elite processor. The 15 is only available with the X Elite. Compared to the Plus, the X Elite has two extra CPU cores and can run its cores around 10% faster. It also has slightly better integrated graphics. On the MacBook Air side, there are also two processor options available. But in this case, the only difference is that the cheaper model has two less GPU cores. The CPU's performance itself, it should be identical. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, the Surface laptops beat the Airs. That is in overall multi-core performance. In Cinebench, which tests the laptops running at max performance, it's the same thing. The Surface laptops are faster, substantially so. However, since the MacBook Airs are faster in single-core performance, some applications and tasks will still feel snappier on the Mac. Now, one interesting observation is that these processors do perform better in the larger versions of these laptops, likely due to their better cooling. When it comes to the MacBook Air, the difference is minimal and can only be seen when we ran Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes. The Air 15's performance drop is less than the 13's. However, this difference is far more significant with the Surface. The same X Elite processor in the 15-inch Surface significantly outperforms the one in the 13, even in a single run of Cinebench. When we look at power draw between the Airs and the Surfaces, the difference is massive in favour of the Airs. Under max load, the Surface 13 draws an average of 34 watts. The MacBook Air, on the other hand, draws only 8 for the 13-inch model. The MacBook Air is just much more power efficient than the Surface, and this plays a big role in how much better the Air is in terms of heat, fan noise, and battery life. So, 
Let's get into those topics. The Air is dead silent in performance tasks, as it does not need a fan to cool its processor. The fan noise of the Surface laptop was better than other Intel laptops, but of course not as good as the Air. In light tasks, it was dead silent, but in performance tasks, you could hear it going in a quiet room. When it comes to the heat you feel, in light tasks, neither laptop got warm, but when their performance is maxed out, both measured around the same in terms of warmth. However, I want to say something important. When actually using these laptops, any performance tasks on any of the Surface models made them feel very warm. For example, joining a Zoom call. The Airs, on the other hand, remain cool for those same tasks. Now, when it comes to integrated graphics performance, it is a bit of the opposite of what we just saw with general CPU performance. The integrated graphics of the M3s in the MacBook Airs are simply more powerful. This is just going to make them better for tasks like video editing or gaming. Simple games and video projects only though. None of these laptops are powerful enough for more. When it comes to AI tasks though, the MPU of the Snapdragon X processor destroys Apple's M3s. Look, you may not use AI tasks all that much right now, but these are the results. We're going to give a score of 8 out of 10 for performance to the surfaces and a score of 6 to the airs. However, for heat and fan noise, we're going to give a win to the air with a score of 9 and a score of 7 to the surface. When on battery, the surfaces laptop's performance was around the same as when they were plugged in. That being said, we did see some variance. This is likely due to how sensitive these laptops are to heat in terms of their overall performance. As I said before, they do get very warm. The airs on the other hand were far more reliable. Now, when unplugged doing high performance tasks, the Surface laptops don't last that long on battery. This is because these Qualcomm Snapdragon processors are not that power efficient when run at higher wattage. I've talked about this extensively in another video, which I will link below. As you can see, when running high performance tasks, these Surface laptops last around the same as competing Intel laptops, and they are way behind the MacBook Airs. When doing light tasks though, like streaming a movie over Wi-Fi, the Surface laptops do perform well, but still not quite as good as the Airs. With all this in mind, we're going to give a score of 9 for battery life to the Airs and 7 to the Surface. To test speakers, Ethan Sierra and I listened to several tracks on each of these laptops. The surfaces have a flatter sound and are ever so slightly louder. I preferred them more. The airs sound more dynamic and Sierra and Ethan preferred them more. That being said, none of us had a strong preference, and compared to the MacBook Pro 14, which has the best speakers of any 14-inch laptop, these are both nowhere near as good. So overall, a 6 for the surfaces and a 6 for the airs. When it comes to connectivity, all these laptops have two fast USB 4 ports, a headphone mic combo jack, and a separate proprietary charging port. But the Surface also has a traditional USB-A port, and the 15-inch has a micro SD card slot. The port placement on the Surface laptops is also better too, as they can all be charged from either side of the laptop. This means that your charging cable won't get in your way if your outlet is on the right side of the laptop. Now let's talk about the external display support that these laptops can drive. On the Surface Laptop 7, we were able to get three external monitors going, as well as the laptop's internal display. On the Air, on the other hand, you can only get two, and that is with the laptop's display turned off. But it's not quite that simple. You see, we found the Surface could drive all three at only 4K 30Hz or at 1440 60Hz. Or if we went down to just two monitors, we could get one at 4K 60 and one at 1440 60, plus the internal display. The Air, on the other hand, can drive both external monitors at very high resolution at 60Hz. When it comes to Wi-Fi connectivity, the Surface supports Wi-Fi 7, whereas the Air only supports Wi-Fi 6E. With the clear win in connectivity going to the Surface, we're going to give it a score of 8, whereas the Air, we're going to give a score of 4. Let's talk about stability. The MacBook Air was perfect. The Surface Laptop 7 was not. It uses a new ARM architecture, and because of this, we noticed several instabilities. For example, during a web conference call via Slack, our Surface Laptop completely crashed and switched off. And while writing the script for this very video, the Surface Laptop 15's keyboard, it completely stopped working. Plus, both our Surface Laptop 13s occasionally just wouldn't charge when they were plugged into the wall. Software compatibility in general was hit or miss. Take League of Legends, a game I personally play. It didn't work at all. I know this sounds odd, but right now, you're going to have an easier time finding working software on a Mac than one of these new Windows ARM laptops. That other video of ours that I did mention earlier also goes through application compatibility. And since it is likely to improve over time, we do have an article on our website which we will keep up to date. So right now, we do have to give the Surface a 5 out of 10 for stability and the Air a 10. 
Finally, let's talk about the overall value including pricing and upgradability. For a configuration with 16GB of memory and 512GB of storage, which I would recommend for most people, here are the prices. The Surface Laptop 13 with the X Plus processor costs $1,200 and the X Elite $1,400. The Surface Laptop 15 is $1,500. The MacBook Airs are more expensive. The 13-inch model costs $1,500 and the 15-inch $1,700. Value is a big win for the Surface and Add to that that the MacBook Air is completely non-upgradable after you purchase it. The Surface Laptop storage can be upgraded. So we're only going to give the Air a score of 4 for value and the Surface Laptop a score of 7. Finally, drumroll please, let's add up the scores to declare a winner. The Surface Laptops have come out on top with a total score of 83 points. The Airs surprisingly are not too far behind with a score of 80. But we're going to deduct a point from the surfaces because of Microsoft's constant advertisements. It is a disgrace that for a device that costs well north of $1,000 that you're paying for, they feel that they have the right to advertise to you on. With that said, congratulations to Microsoft and Qualcomm for taking this win. The Surface, it is a great device. But as you've seen, it is not a clear victory. It really depends on what's important to you as to which you should buy. Overall, my recommendation is to buy the Surface if you know that your applications will run natively or you're sticking to light tasks. Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, that sort of thing, those applications work really well. That being said, in my specific use case, I would actually get the Air. You see, I use a variety of professional applications and I want to know for sure that they work. Also, I value as little heat and fan noise as possible and the Air gives me that and I'm not that sensitive to price. But I stick by the results of this video, there are many people who will prefer the Surface more. Final note, as you probably saw in our graphs, there isn't much point in buying the Surface Laptop 13 with the X Elite processor. It doesn't deliver the full performance of the X Elite, its battery life is worse than the Plus variant and it costs $200 more, so stick to the X Plus if you're buying the 13 inch. I'm going to cover this in a full video which you won't want to miss, so make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on for that. Well. That's all we got for you. Our website is the place to go for all the laptops that we recommend for various types of users and where to go to get the best deals on them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.